This is Film Bookcast. Film Bookcast. Film Bookcast. The official podcast of Film Book. Get ready for the latest in film news, TV show news, and theatrical reviews. Film Book's podcast starts now. Hello, everyone. Welcome to Film Bookcast, the official podcast of Film Book. My name is Chris Banks. If you're tuning in for the first time, what I do on Film Bookcast, I discuss the latest film and TV show news. I also review an in theater film sometimes. You can find more about Film Bookcast on film book.com by using the search term Film Bookcast. You can also email us at podcast at film book.com with Film Bookcast in the subject line. Let's Let's jump right into it this week. This week in movie news, Deadline reported, and fans of Ferris Bueller's Day Off will be excited as I guess there's going to be a spin off film focused on the valet who go for a joyride in Cameron Fry's father's Ferrari. The film is going to be titled Sam and Victor's Day Off. There's no word on who'll be playing Sam or Victor. But the spinoff is going to come from the Cobra Kai team, John Hurwitz, Hayden Schlossberg, and Josh Heald. It'll be written by Bill Posley, who also wrote the Karate Kid sequel episodes. Exciting news for anybody like me, who's a fan of Ferris Bueller's Day Off. Some more film news. Robert De Niro is set to star in the upcoming Warner Brothers mob drama, Wise Guys. That's according to The Hollywood Reporter. Wise Guys will be directed by Barry Levinson and will reunite De Niro and Levinson from the 2008 HBO television movie The Wizard of Lies, where De Niro played the con artist Bernie Madoff. De Niro will play two of the main characters in the film. Wise Guys will be a period piece that tells the story of Vito Genovese and Frank Costello, two Italian-Americans who are running competing crime families throughout the mid-20th century. In 1957, Genovese attempted to assassinate Costello but failed, although he did cause Costello to retire at the time. De Niro was set to portray both Genovese and Costello. It's unclear just how this will be accomplished or who else will appear in the film. Finally, this week in film news, according to Deadline, Golden Globe nominee Mark Wahlberg has signed on for the leading role in Apple original film in Skydance's newest feature titled The Family Plan. It's an action comedy about a seemingly normal dad whose past comes back to haunt him. Directed by Simon Cillian, directed by Simon Selen Jones, who is set to reunite with Wahlberg after working on the upcoming Arthur the King film, it's written by David Cogskill. The film tells the story of a suburban dad who must take his family on the run when his past catches up to him. That's it for film news for this week. This week in TV news, Showtime announced that Lord of the Rings vet Elijah Wood has officially signed on for a season-long guest-starring role in the forthcoming second season of Yellow Jackets which is slated to begin its production this month. Wood will be playing the role of citizen detective Walter, who will serve as a challenge to Christina Rishi's Misty. Equal parts survival epic, psychological horror story, and coming-of-age drama, it tells the saga of a team of widely talented high school girls soccer players who become the unlucky survivors of a plane crash deep in the remote northern wilderness. The series chronicles their descent from a complicated but thriving team of savage clans, while also tracking the lives they've attempted to piece back together nearly 25 years later, proving that the past is never really truly the past, and what began out in the wilderness is far from over. Some more TV news, and what would be Salma Hayek's first major TV gig since appearing as the frequent guest in sitcoms like Ugly Betty and 30 Rock? She's currently in negotiations to join the cast of Netflix's Netflix's long-anticipated Black Mirror Season 6. The sixth season will, will reportedly be consisting of more installments than the fifth season, which had three episodes. Season 6 is being described as a more cinematic in-scope, with each episode being developed as as a standalone film. Exciting news for fans of Black Mirror. The last bit of TV news, Scream vet Neve Campbell has been tapped to play the lead in the ABC upcoming drama series Avalon. That's according to Deadline this week. It's her second collaboration with director David E. Kelly after appearing in the first season of Netflix's The Lincoln Lawyer. The series stems from a short story by author Michael Conley and takes place in the city of Avalon on Contalina Island. The series is set to follow L.A. Sheriff Department's detective Nicole Sershi, who operates out of, the, out of a small office in the town. The series will follow her as she's dragged into a mystery the island has never seen before. 
That's it for TV news. This week in international film news, a new upcoming TV series titled This England, starring Kenneth Bragna, has debuted its trailer. It's an upcoming limited drama and debuts on Sky Atlantic in the UK this September. Co-written by Michael Winterbottom and starring Bragna, The England is based on Boris Johnson's tumultuous first months as prime minister and traces the impact on the country and traces the impact on the country of the first wave of the coronavirus. The series hits on September 21st and all 6 episodes will be released at the same time. You can watch a teaser trailer for This England. We got a first look this week at Emily Blunt and Hugo Blick's BBC and Prime video drama The English. She'll star as Lady Cornelia Law, aristocratic Englishwoman who comes together with Pawnee ex-cavalry scout Eli Whip in 1890 Mid-America to cross a violent landscape built on dreams and blood. The English will debut on Prime Video and on the BBC. Lastly, in international film news, Israeli network Yes TV has greenlit a second season of the award-winning comedy comedy Bloody Murray. Production will begin next year on the rom-com, which is headlined by Naomi, by Naomi Levov and Rotem Sela, who played two 35-year-old roommates looking for love. The gynecologist in university, in university lectures lives change when Murray ditches the scene of a hit and run and the man she crashed into shows up at her apartment. Murray realizes her own feelings for Lear and chaos ensues as she, as she convinces herself Lear is the one for her. The show won Best Comedy Award at Series Mania 2024 and will launch in 2024. That's it for international film news from this week. This week in DVD at home releases is The Black Phone. After having been abducted and tortured by a mysterious masked man who's long been a serial killer, a 13-year-old schoolboy named Finney Shaw finds himself trapped in a soundproof basement where his cries for help cannot be heard by anyone in the outside world. However, in the dungeon where he is kept, he discovers a disconnected black phone and begins receiving calls from the previous victims of the grabber. The black phone is now available on DVD. Jurassic World Dominion is now available on DVD. Taking place four years after the destruction of Isla Nubar, the dinosaur Dinosaurs that fled the tropical island are now roaming the earth. This newfound existence poses a dangerous threat to humans, who now have a con- who now have to contend with a new apex predator. We see the return of Jurassic World's main characters, and together they must find a way to share the planet with these fearsome creatures. Jurassic World Dominion is now available on DVD. Blowback is now available on DVD. A killer must seek assistance from his unlikely allies, those he has previously robbed, to reclaim the merchandise they stole. Blowback is now available on DVD. That's it for at-home releases. This week in film trailers, Apple TV gives us one of the funniest movies I think they're going to come out with to date. The film title is The Greatest Beer Run Ever, and the craziest part about this movie is that it's actually based on a true story. Peter Farley's forthcoming for- forthcoming war comedy drama based on the real-life experience of Chick Donahue. The film will have its world premiere at the Toronto International Film Festival, followed by a limited theatrical release and a streaming debut on September 20th on Apple TV. Chicky wants to support his friends fighting in Vietnam, so he does something wild. Personally brings them American beer in the middle of a war zone. <laughs> <laughs> what starts as a well-meaning journey quickly changes Chicky's life and perspective. Directed by Peter Farley, based on the true tale of Donahue, who left New York City in 1967 to track down and share a few beers with his childhood buddies in the army. Check out the trailer for the greatest beer run ever. It'll debut on Apple TV Plus and in theaters September 20th. Another film trailer is actually one of the most exciting movie trailers I've ever seen Netflix release is a ti- is a film titled End of the Road. Queen Latifah and Chris Bridges star in the film that will be available September 9th. Queen Latifah's character tries everything she can do to protect her family from the criminals trying to chase after them. Directed by Malshin Shel- Shelton from a screenplay written by David Lawry. The film's about a mom of two kids who relocates across the country with her with her brother. The family's move to the Southland is thrown into complete chaos when they witness a murder on their road trip. Now the murderer will stop at nothing to find them. Check out the trailer for End of the Road. It's a shame that this movie's on Netflix because I think that it'll... A movies like this are what people need to bring their families to the theater or go on a date, you know? And it's a, just a shame to see this kind of movie on Netflix. Exciting release for Netflix. And check out the trailer for End of the Road. It'll debut on the platform September 9th. The last trailer we'll check out this week, the film titled Bandit. It's a crime drama based on the real-life story of the Flying Bandit, a criminal who was able to rob 59 banks without getting caught. It'll debut September 23 in theater 
theaters and on video on demand. In 1985, Gilbert Galvin Jr., a charming career criminal, escapes from a U.S. prison in Michigan and crosses the border into Canada, where he assumes an identity Robert Whiteman. After, fa- after falling in love with Andrea, a caring social worker he can't provide for, Robert turns to robbing banks and discovers that he's exceptionally good at it. Under the guise of a security analyst, Robert begins flying around the country robbing multiple cities in a day, eventually catching the attention of a national news outlet that dubbed him the Flying Bandit. Addicted to the rush of money that provides his double life, Robert eventually turns to loan sharking and, and reputed gangster Tommy K for bigger opportunities. Bandit is directed by Alan Unger and written by Craig Weinman. It'll debut September 23 in theaters and on video on demand. That's it for film trailers. This week in TV trailers, we finally get a first look at Rob Zombie's upcoming Adams Family series, Wednesday. It stars Jenna Ortega, and in this supernatural coming of age series, it will follow Wednesday Adams as she navigates adolescent life amid many other obstacles, namely, mastering her newfound psychic abilities stopping an unknown murderer from going into a killing spree across her town and solving the 25-year-long family mystery. All in today's work for, members, for a member of the Adams Family's youngest member. Check out the trailer for Wednesday. There's no word yet on when the series will debut on Netflix, but we'll keep up with news about it. Another trailer that debuted this week, Net- Peacock gave us the Vampire Academy trailer, adapted from the young adult series of novels by Rochelle Mead. It's a story of romance and adventure, with friendship between two young women, Rose Hathaway, and vampire-human hybrid, and Lisa Drogomir, who's a royal vampire. They're tested as the pair prepare to enter a vampire society, one as powerful as royal and the other as a sworn protector. Check out the trailer for Vampire Academy. It'll debut on Peacock September 15th. The last TV trailer comes to us from Showtime. Julian Kay is given a second chance in the upcoming American Gigolo remake. Set for TV and played by John Berthal, it'll debut September 9th on Showtime. In the trailer, a male escort released from his 15 years in prison after a wrongful murder conviction, which is chronicled in in the original movie. It shows brief flashbacks into Kay's life before and highlights Rosie O'Donnell's character, Detective Sunday. Check out the trailer for American Gigolo. It'll debut on Showtime September 9th. All right, time for this week's movie review. For this week's movie review, we're checking out Not Okay. You can find it on Hulu. It's about a misguided young woman who's who's desperate for friends and fame, fakes a trip to Paris to update her social media presence. A terrifying incident takes place in the real world, which becomes a part of the imaginary trip and other, and offers all she wants. Not Okay stars Zoe Deutsch, Dylan O'Brien, Mia Isaac. Not Okay is a pretty good example of the time capsule that we're in in this country where we've allowed fame to become its own um, trap, we'll say. The film opens with her narrating her own desire to be noticed. She wants attention for no reason. She just wants attention. She wants um, empty validation, right? She says she wants to be seen, right? And she wants to be known and she wants to be loved. I think that that could be said for all of us. And I love how the film kind of begins with the question of, or not the question, but the the assertion of that we should be careful what we wish for. Because I, I find that to be true in many conversations with many different people. You know, the the idea that we can be quote unquote famous for having an opinion or for being a certain way or for having a certain identity or for going through a certain experience is why this fleeting, empty, hollow, you know, cheap culture exists now in, in this country. You know, a character played by by Mia Isaac Rowan Aldrin, within the film, you know, she survived a school shooting and she lost her sister, is using her identity, using her experiences, using what she's gone through in the world to kind of help others see things that they may not have seen or allow others to go through certain experiences that that they may not have been able to go through if not for her communicating them. And it's a great paradox between... A character like Rowan and a character like Danny, because Danny represents the worst of this country in a way. You know, we we have this empty 
like I said, hollow desire to be known for nothing, you know, and it doesn't really square with our deep desire of really wanting to be loved because we, we can only be loved if we're vulnerable, you know, if we allow the world to see us for who we are. And a character like Danny really never does. You know, she, she contorts her whole life to this fake story and this fake identity, and it's emblematic of everything wrong in this country right now. You know, we have we have criminals acting like politicians. We have bad people acting like teachers. We have kids acting like parents, you know, and it's it's a, it's it's I'm not sure what the solution is going to be. But, you know, a character like played by Dylan O'Brien, whose character is Colin, you know, represents a certain demographic. It's not really separated by race. It's more separated by age and income where the internet and all of this unregulated technology that has been able to spread lies and warp people's perception of the world and really manipulate people's emotions has generated this slew of internet celebrities or whatever you want to call them and Dylan O'Brien plays a character that's that's great in representing this hollow, you know, really worthless internet celebrity, you know, that really doesn't bring people happiness. It doesn't bring the world much joy, really, because if, you, if, if you're perpetuating bubbles, you know, or, or if you're spreading lies around, how good is that? You know, and the character like Rowan shows us why that's true. You know, why you don't want to be like Danny. You don't want to be like Colin. You don't want to be... You don't you don't really want to be famous. You want to do something that or sh- or say something or share something or create something or or learn something that allows people to see who you really are and allows people to value you for you and your work. You know, instead of this empty fleeting I'm going to lie and, you know, generate attention that doesn't really mean anything. You know, we ha- we have to get out of this kind of imaginary culture because of the internet you know and i hope that laws help with that and help blend the imaginary with reality so so many people can't be lost in their own worlds danny represents a certain evil in our country you know and in the world that we have to really police and have to really kind of take more seriously than we we have before because there there are real there are real world consequences of criminals acting like politicians you know and we've lived those consequences and we've lived the the mental gymnastics that happen when you know these online celebrities quote unquote get exposed as being nothing but liars or people with with their own addictions and their own mental health challenges and when you gain attention for those things i'm not sure that that's a good thing in the long run gaining attention for paying attention to fixing those issues or you know working to heal those issues that's a good thing but i'm not sure that this tendency that we have to you know really magnify celebritize mental illness is a net positive for a free country i think that the results are in in movies like not okay and characters like danny sanders you know show us that you know we have a big problem in this country and it's a sickness and we have to fix it overall i think the movie was done pretty well and it underscores the value of you know doing something of value with your life if you gain notoriety or gain attention for the things that you do in your life then that's a net positive for the world and for the individual but if we keep doing things just for attention this empty fleeting need for attention that's all we'll get is just more attention and that doesn't necessarily mean that it's a good thing it was ironic in the in the in the story and i like this in the story how you know a liar wanted to start an honesty movement on the internet. You know, it's it's a great idea. I wish that it would actually happen, you know, because we need to be more truthful on the internet. We need to be more truthful generally in a free country or else it's not going to be free anymore. What I, I also thought was an interesting part of the film was the shadowy figure that kept appearing. The person in the hood that ended up being Danny in a certain shot. You know, that was cool. I think that represented guilt. 
because when you lie, you're always guilty. You know, you always will possess that guilt in certain ways and show it. Even guilt operates in us unconsciously in so many different ways. And we see it in Danny in so many different ways. And it really just stems from not being truthful. You have to be truthful. And Not Okay does a good job showing us how the internet makes us use people. And when you lie, lies breed contempt. And when you when you use the internet, that is just a public utility that's in all of our lives, to use people lie, you will end up growing your own hate inside of you. And that's what we have to work on in this country. And, and Not Okay does a good job talking about that. I think it could have been done a little better. I'd give it a 6 out of 10, I think the IMDb score. And the Rotten Tomatoes is 74%. I think that, that that's pretty accurate for what it is. It's an okay movie. I think it could have been done. It could have been a little more powerful. The writing could have been better. There's, there's, there's a couple throwaway scenes in there. It's not that long. The movie's about an hour, 40 minutes. Check out Not Okay if you want a good time capsule. Essentially everything wrong in this country right now. Directed by Quinn Shepard. It is on Hulu and check out Not Okay. And and I hope you like it as much as I did. Thanks so much for checking us out this week. Thank you so much for listening to this episode of Film Book Cast. You can find more of my work on film-book.com. Just search for Chris Banks or Film Book Cast. You can also find me on Twitter at C Banksy, S-E-E Banksy. I'm also on Instagram at the Chris Banks. If you listen to this podcast on iTunes or another podcast service, please rate and review this episode. If you're listening to this podcast on our YouTube channel, Film Book Podcast, please like our video. Subscribe to our channel and leave us a comment in the comment section. It really helps people discover our podcast. Please also consider becoming one of our patrons on patreon.com slash filmbook. Your support helps us create more engaging content. You'll find our Patreon link below in the description. If you want to tweet about this podcast, just use the hashtag filmbookcast. Tune in next week for the next episode of the Filmbookcast. Thanks for listening, everyone. We'll see you then.